Um, Tom asked us to problematise something that perhaps occurs in coaching and maybe present some of the solutions that might be supportive of perhaps trying to solve that problem. One of the things that certainly football coach and I'm sure broader coaching has been challenged by historically is the notion of playbooks as being the recipe based solution to a lot of coaching problems. Part of the challenge with playbooks is it typically organises a linear, pre-decided, fairly well organised process to a problem which is much more complex. And often it ends up with quite low resolution solutions to quite high resolution problems. Um, a guy called Francis Wesley wrote a book in 2006 which was titled Getting to Maybe. And he sought to organise problems, if you like, into three different headers. The first element was problems that are simple. And the example that he used as a simple problem would be the recipe for baking a cake. You have a collection of ingredients, specific quantities that go in a particular order, and if you combine those ingredients in a particular way, largely you'll end up with the same solution, unless you've had the fortune or misfortune of meeting my wife. Um, typically that recipe can be repeated over and over and over and largely you'll end up with the same outcome. Wesley then suggested that a complicated problem might be the equivalent of sending a rocket to the moon. You need a high degree of expertise and there are a lot of different parts, but it's a non-human machine and the moon is a particular destination and having sent one rocket there, you can largely find a particular pr uh, process which will support you to send future rockets to the moon. He likened a complex problem to that of raising a child. Each child is unique and it's almost impossible to separate each child's human disposition from their experiences and the context in which they've experienced those. And perhaps the suggestion is, is if we consider coaching and player development probably as a complex task. If that's the case, the risk is, is that we keep looking at simple, low resolution, recipe based solutions to complex problems. What are perhaps the alternatives? Possible alternatives are to consider design principles that support people to consider the things that they place into a process of development, either for themselves as a coach or for the players that are in their care. And this next three or four minutes gives a little bit of a backdrop of some of the work that we've sought to do over a number of years to build more of a complex, responsive process of coach support and development across a national framework. And I guess historically, when you think about programs of education, whether that's in an institution such as this, whether it's in the schools that we all had the fortune of being supported through, or whether it's in a football or a more complex coaching environment, what typically happens is curriculums are pre-decided, they're typically standardised, and they're typically assessed against a pre-decided set of criteria, which perhaps isn't helpful for people that are learning to function in an, in an environment which is different from somebody else's as a different human being than somebody else's. So we underpinned our work with three principles, and the intention was that by embedding in, and embodying these three principles, that it would support coaches to think about how they build a greater degree of A, self-awareness, and B, consider the decision-making process that they go through in uh, deciding how to put a session on, how to behave with particular players, or how to build a, a more organised or structured, if there can be such a thing, process for player development. Uh, and in terms of how do you make that work across a national framework for coach education pathway? Those of you that are familiar with the England DNA, in its early phases, it was broken down into five elements. Those five elements were who we are, so what's your purpose? The second one is how we play. So if you're going to play football or you're going to play any sport, you're probably going to have a view on how you would want that sport to look. The third element is the future player. So who are the players that are in your care? what are their current characteristics and dispositions, and what may be some of the qualities that we might like to support their development of. And the fourth and fifth elements were how we coach and how we support. With the coaching a bit more about what the field coach does, the sort of traditional football coach, and the how we support is how they then embody and maybe involve some of the more holistic developments around physiological, psychological, and social development of those players. And the challenge for each coach was to define who they are, how they want to play, who the players are in their care, and as a consequence, how they're going to develop a healthy tension across those elements in deciding how to coach and support those players' development. Fundamentally, then, you end up with a different assessment process for each coach. Each coach is challenged to align everything that they do on a daily basis with the things that they've said are important. So if their purpose is to ensure that the young people in their care enjoy playing sport, every decision that they make should be supportive of that being the outcome. They were then challenged 
by the coach developers and the coach educators that supported them to ensure that the practice they were delivering was aligning with their stated intentions. That would be different from coach to coach. The principles that we used then to practice coaches making sense of what they're doing, the first one was to be able to present back to their peers what it is that they think is important and how it is that they best make sense of it. With the simple premise, which many of you will be familiar with, if you want to learn something, teach it to others. And you'll shortly see a clip of a coach who's now the first team coach for a Premier League club presenting to his peers as he learned how to coach the things that were important to him. The second element within that is ensuring that the environment is challenging enough. So if someone says they're doing something and perhaps they're not aligning their actual practice of what they're saying, that they should be called to task on that. And hopefully this video gives a nice illustration of that. But I need to try and uh, not be quite reactive, try to um, be a little bit more balanced. Um, I think obviously in coaching and, and it's your responsibility to, to represent um, obviously under the club's umbrella but to be a coach you, you're trying to show people the right way so that's what I try to do. Taking decisions I think for, as a coach uh, and, and potentially as a manager you have to uh, be able to take decisions and obviously two massive words there, honest and trust which I think is um, I think it's a short career if, uh, if you don't manage to uh, earn or at least uh, receive both. So how I coach, um, and I'd say this is my style, I uh, always demand high standards, um, and by that, ready to train. <laughs> How can that be funny? Sorry, no, it's just, it just says always be on time and he was late. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. How you playing? So so there's a coach presenting his view on how he thinks he behaves and how he thinks players should be supported within their development. And the first team coach is challenged by an apprentice coach about the fact that he put on his profile that he would always be on time and he'd been late that morning. The process of coaches supporting themselves to better understand and then present that to others hopefully helps build their self-awareness and decision-making, which means beyond any formal process of learning and development, hopefully they develop skills that sustain them when nobody's there to support. The second element is fundamentally then when we practice and so when we build coaching sessions, when we build game experience for players, whether young or senior, that we consider rather than a recipe based approach that we take ingredients and build our own processes that are supportive and responsive to the people that are in front of us. So rather than a recipe book, the second thing that we did was built principles of practice design so that coaches can take a collection of ingredients, throw them around in different ways and build something that in its design seeks to uh, focus attention on the things that they believe is important and then in terms of some of the demands that they place on individual players is understanding and attuning the decisions that they make to the perceived needs of those individual players. So two elements going on there. How do we set up and structure coach development to support coaches to better understand what's important to them and how do we then support them when they structure practice to align what they've said is important to them in their environment with what they do on an individual basis. To finish, and the natural problem that occurs is when you seek to solve one problem, it's important to understand all of the smaller problems that fit into that larger problem. What's typically happened from a coach education perspective is coach educators, like myself, will tend to have recipe-based solutions to structuring programmes of learning. The biggest challenge has been supporting coach developers to understand that we can't tell them what to deliver to a group of coaches at 10 o'clock on a Wednesday morning, nor can we tell them what practice to deliver at 4 o'clock on a Thursday afternoon. We need to build skill in them to be able to make decisions that are as responsive to the coaches that are in their care as we are challenging coaches to make the same decisions with players. Thank you.